continuing with previous lecture that the classification of amino acid amino acid on the basis of an r group are classified into four classes the first class is r group with non polar there are 10 amino acid here we can see these are the 10 amino acid glycine alanine valine cysteine proline leucine isoleucine methionine tryptophan and phenylalanine these are the 10 amino acids which are having which are having a non polar group now we can see here r is equal to hydrogen so it is a glycine r is equal to ch3 so alanine and it is continue in case of an proline there is an interesting case that side chain r group is involved with an amino group nitrogen this is the case where we are having the involvement of an side chain r group with an amino group last two example that is a tryptophan and phenylalanine these are the examples in which we are having a aromatic group as a side chain r group here we are having aromatic group as a side chain r group in case of an cysteine and in case of an methionine there is a presence of an sulfur there is a presence of an sulfur and cysteine is particularly involved in the disulfide type of the linkage so we are considering these 10 amino acid which are having a r group which is a non polar and in short we can see that here we are writing a alphabet for these glycine we can represent it by three word letter g l y or simply it is represented as a capital g alanine ala valine val or v similarly here methionine m tryptophan trp phenylalanine phe so these are the short forms of the amino so these are the 10 amino acids which are we are considering now let's consider the second group that is a r group polar but uncharged in this case there are the polar atoms or the difference in electronegativity between carbon and these atoms like hydroxy group like nh or amino amide group or there is a phenol group attaches as a r group to the amino acid and they are five in number now let's consider their structure here there is a example of an r group polar but uncharged and they are five in number serine thionine tyrosine aspartame and glutamate now here we can see what are the different type of the hetero atoms are there with this now here there is a presence of an ch2oh so hydroxy or oxygen is a hetero atom here again we are having a hydroxy as a hetero atom here we are having phenyl hydroxy in case of an tyrosine in case of an aspartame there is a presence of an amide group and similarly in place of an glutamine there is a presence of an amide group so we are having a this second class where there are polar but uncharged group they are polar in the nature because there is a electronegativity difference between the carbon and the hetero atoms but they are uncharged okay now let's consider next class that is a r group polar but positively charged these are the amino acid with a positive charge on the nitrogen atom the most of the time these amino acids are having a amino group or amide group where there is a presence of a positive charge on the nitrogen and they are basic in a nature now let's consider the example these are three in a number lysine arginine and histidine here lysine arginine histidine now you can see here there is a presence of an nh3 plus there is a presence of an nh 2 plus similarly there is a presence of an nh which is in the uh, ring in a histidine so we are having these three examples where there is a positive charge present on the amino acid 
irrespective of these two. Now you can see here minus and plus which is a charge present on the carboxylic and the amino group of amino acid and there is an additional charge on this side chain R group. There is an additional charge on the side chain R group and it is a positive charge. Therefore, we are considering that these are the three in a number and these are basic in a nature. So, third class of the amino acid that is the R group polar but positively charged or polar and positively charged. Now, let us consider the next that is the R group polar and negatively charged. There are only two amino acids in this category. These amino acids having negative charge and they are having a carboxylic group functionality and they are acidic in a nature. Along with the amino acid, acid group or carboxylic group, there is a presence of an one more additional carboxylic group in this structure. Now let's consider this structure. Here we can see that there is a presence of an carboxylic group, CH2 and carboxylic group called as a aspartic acid. Here it is called as a glutamic acid and there is a presence of CH2, CH2 and a carboxylic group. Okay. Now in this case there is a R group which is a polar in nature and having a negative charge and this negative charge is on the carboxylic group. This negative charge is on the carboxylic group. In addition to this carboxylic there is a presence of one more carboxylic. Similar here also in case of an glutamine addition to this there is a presence of one more carboxylic group hence they are basic sorry acidic in a nature so we are having negative charge on it discharge of carboxylic acid is balanced with the amino and extra charges remain similar for the aspartic acid also so this is the classification on the basis of an R group so there are four classes on the basis of an R group First, that is a non-polar R group. Second class, that is a polar R group but uncharged. Third one is a polar with positively charged. And last one is a polar with negatively charged. In first group, that is a non-polar R group, there are presence of an 10 amino acid. Then in case of a second, there is a presence of an 5 amino acid polar but uncharged and in case of in third that is a polar and positively charged there are three amino acids and last polar and negatively charged there are two amino acids. So this is the classification on the basis of an R group. Now let us consider the second type of the classification which is based on the nutritional value of the amino acid and there are two classes in which we are having the classification that is essential amino acids and non-essential amino acid. So there are two class essential amino acid and non-essential amino acid. Now let's consider what is essential amino acid. These are the amino acids which are not synthesized in a cell of human beings. So they should be supplied or there should be supply of this amino acid in a diet. So therefore they are called as the essential amino acid. As human body cannot synthesize this by metabolism, so their requirement uh, should be fulfilled in the diet. Therefore they are called as a essential. While in case of a non-essential amino acid, while in case of a non-essential amino acid, these amino acids are synthesized in a cell. These amino acids are synthesized in a cell and need not be included in a diet. So body can synthesize, therefore, these are called as a non-essential amino acids. There is a one more category which comes in between these two. For certain period of the life or for certain age there is a requirement of an one type of the amino acid and after that that can be synthesized by the body such are in between the in between essential amino acid and non essential amino acid which are moderately essential for a human being okay so this is the classification now let's consider the example of essential and non essential a chart is going to explain which are essential and which are non-essential. Here are some examples given for essential histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, 
phenylalanine, tryptophan, valine, threonine. These are the example of essential. So body cannot synthesize these on. So we require their supply in a diet. In case of a non-essential, there are few amino acids which are given or remaining 11 amino acids are given. These are 9 in a number and these are 11 in a number. So 9 plus 11, 20. Here we are having alanine, arginine, asparginine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, proline and etc. Okay, so this is the chart which explains there are essential and non-essential amino acid and with example. Now last category depending upon the catabolism or depending upon the activity or reactions happen due to the amino acid are classified into three classes. So depending upon the catabolism we are having a three classes of the amino acid. Okay. So what are these three classes? Glucogenic amino acid glucogenic amino acid these are the amino acids serve as a precursor serve as a precursor in glucogenesis for the glucose formation so during the glucose formation these amino acids are utilized therefore called as a gluconic as amino acid example or they are in short gamd glycine alanine methionine aspartic acid so these are the four amino acids which are used in the synthesis of an glucose for synthesis of an glucose these amino acids are used therefore these are glucogenic amino acid okay now next is a ketogenic amino acid ketogenic amino acid similar to previous these are the amino acid which are used in the breakdown to form the ketone bodies from different components like carbohydrate, fatty acid, lipids. We are using amino acid for breakdown these molecules and convert this molecule into the ketone body. There are two examples leucine and lysine. These are the amino acids which are used in the formation of a ketone body by breaking down the different molecules and therefore they are called as a ketogenic amino acid okay and last is both glucogenic and ketogenic amino acid these amino acid break down to form the precursor of both that is the ketone bodies and glucose therefore third class is having both okay the remaining amino acids are into that so this simply explain that amino acids are important and they can be classified in different ways Depending upon the R group, they are classified into four classes. Depending upon the nutritional value, they are classified into two classes. And depending upon the catabolism, they are classified into three classes. In first case, that is depending upon the R group, they are classified into four classes. So what are these four classes? R group with non-polar nature. Second, R group with polar but uncharged. Third one is a R group with polar and positively charged and last one is a R group with polar and negatively charged. So we are considering these four groups. Then depending upon the nutritional value they are classified as a essential amino acid and non-essential amino acid. So we are having the classification essential and non-essential amino acid and Last, depending upon the catabolism, there is a classification of amino acid into three classes, glucogenic amino acid, then ketogenic amino acid and last, both. So this is the classification of the amino acid. We will continue with the next lecture for the amino acid properties, amphoteric nature, zwitterion formation and titration curve of the amino acids. So here we are going to stop and thank you very much.